Greetings and welcome to a new video about a DC series motor example. This is our example number five. In this example, I will discuss a speed adjustment using a parallel resistor across a field winding of a DC series motor. So let's look at our example. We have a DC series motor and it requires a terminal voltage of 260 volts and it draws a current of 40 amps when the shaft speed is 100 radians per second. The armature resistance is given 400 milliohms and also the field resistance is given which is 500 milliohms. The friction torque in here is 4 newton meters and it is independent of the shaft speed. So no matter what the shaft speed is, this will stay, stay the same. The friction will be 4 newton meters. We have two questions. Calculate the shaft torque and the question B is to change the shaft speed a resistor is then placed of 700 milliohms in parallel with the field winding so and that will then again result in a different shaft speed so then calculate the shaft speed while the shaft torque and also the terminal voltage are unchanged okay let's start with the first a question which is then the calculation of the shaft torque again we start with our model and for our series DC motor we have this model again a terminal voltage we have the field winding which is the resistor and also the inductor of the wind of that winding and also the armature resistor also the armature inductor here and our back EMF so we have five elements in our model and we know that the series combination allow us to say that the terminal current is equal to the field current and also equal to the armature current. Okay, the first one, shaft torque. Shaft torque is equal to the developed torque minus the friction torque. So the actual shaft torque will be then a little bit less due to that friction. friction. But the developed torque is on its own given by this expression, which is then the motor constant times the armature current. So we need also the motor constant and also the armature current. We know the armature current because it draws 40 amps. It's exact same as also for the terminal current, but we don't know the motor constant yet. So we need more information. So we can set up again for this situation, the voltage loop or the Kirchhoff voltage law between these two nodes. We can say the terminal voltage will be then these five elements across there the voltage so we have then the back emf again across this element the voltage and also the cross this element the voltage etc so we have all of them here but we know this is a dc situation so we have also dc voltage across this and also dc current through it in a steady state condition so we can say the inductors will have a reactance of zero for zero radius per second for electric frequency so we can say these two elements will be zero. So we have a simplified version of this expression, which only have the resistors in it and also the back EMF. Now, in order to calculate now the required value, we can now continue, just substitute the values given for this situation. We have 260 volts for our terminal voltage. We know our current drawn for this condition, 40 amps. We know our armature resistance or also the field resistance so just substitute the values you can now calculate the back emf for this condition which is 224 volts okay we need of course again our motor console so we need to move towards that value in order to calculate the shaft speed we know from the back emf expression that the back emf is equal to the motor constant times the shaft speed so we know this shaft speed already and we have now calculated our back EMF so we can just rewrite this expression such that we have the motor constant. So that will allow us to write down 224 over 100 radians per second which will give us 2.24 Weber's for our motor constant. So now we are very close to the final result for our shaft torque. Let's first calculate the developed torque. Developed torque again using this formula substitute the value of that motor constant also the given terminal current or the armature current in this case exact same since it's a series condition we have now 
89.6 newton meters. That's now for our developed torque. Now we are now very close to the shaft torque. Shaft torque will be then developed torque minus the friction torque, and it will give us 89.6 minus 4. That will be then 85.6 newton meters. That's for question A. All right, let's move to question B. Again, we start with the model, but in this case, we have a different situation. We have a resistor of 700 milliohms is placed in parallel with the field winding. So how does the model look like? It is, of course, different than the first case. We have now a, another additional resistor across the field winding. So that will, of course, change some parameters in our circuit. So what we have, of course, we, now, we want to calculate a new shaft speed, which is then given by omega m2. And we know if the field current changes, that will change because the field current is flowing in this branch. If this is not placed here, that will of course be the same for armature current also for the terminal current. But if this current will change, the back motor constant will also change. Now, why is this field current changing? Because if there is a parallel combination here, that will change this current. So the field current will change due to the parallel combination. And if the field current is changing, that means the motor constant will also change. That means actually the following in this expression that the field current will have, of course, a relationship with our motor constant. So that is a very important consideration in this case. So we cannot use the motor constant of the first case in question A. So we can say the shaft torque must be unchanged because that's already given in the, in the question B. And the friction torque is also independent of the shaft speed. So there are two conditions we need to consider. And that means actually the following. The torque in the second case, where we have, of course, this parallel combination of the resistor in the field winding, must be equal to the developed torque in the first case. That is because the shaft torque is unchanged, must be unchanged. And also the friction torque is independent of the shaft speed because we are now going to the new shaft speed. And if the shaft speed is changing, normally we will we'll expect, of course, that the friction torque will also change because it is related to that uh, omega. So it is the shaft speed. But in this case, the condition says independent of the shaft speed. That means we can also say that this condition, these two conditions allows us to say the developed torque in the new case is equal to the developed torque in the former case, which is then the question B, A. So we can say the developed torque without this parallel resistor is given by this expression, which is again our uh, result in question A, 89.6 Newton meters, but the developed torque with this parallel combination of the resistor Rx and given by this is also the same. But you can see we have, of course, now different symbols and different parameters because the developed torque one is now related to the motor constant one times the armature current one. And this was just 2.24 and this is 40 amps. That's already calculated and that was this was a result. But now we get a new, in this case, we see a new motor constant, also the new armature current. And again, the product of this one must be again equal to 89.6 Newton meters. So we can allow, we can use this later on in our calculations for to go to the required shaft speed. So we can now use this relationship to make a relationship also for the motor constant. And we already said the field current will be proportional to the motor constant. So if the motor constants are related to each other, that is also a relationship in the field currents. So we can also rewrite this in a different form in order to go to the new motor constant. Because a mo motor constant in the second case, the new situation, is equal to the motor constant in the former case times the ratio of the field currents in this form. So the field current in the new situation divided by the field current in the former situation. Now we know the field current without this Rx must be equal to the armature current. It was 40 amps, just equal to each other in the series combination. 
But in this new situation, what we have, and we have also this motor constant, 2.24 waivers, but in this case, the new condition, we need to write actually this expression. Why is this coming from? You have, of course, these two branches due to that Rx in parallel with this field winding. And in order to calculate this field current for a new situation, we need to know the current flowing in this case using actually the current which is injected in here or which is actually flowing in here, which is just the armature current. But that is actually a new armature current. And we can now use current divider rule by saying this current here, which is a new field current, is equal to the other resistor, because we are now looking in this branch, divided by the total of these two resistors times the current flow in here or current flowing out of this two branches together. And that's actually shown here. So Rx, which is just a parallel combination, which is the other resistor, divided by the total resistor, so there's actually these two, the sum of them, times the new armature current. Still, we don't know that yet. But we can substitute, of course, the values we have given. We have 0 0.7 ohms for our Rx, parallel resistor, and we just also have the field resistance which is 0 0.5 so if i now get this i will have 7 over 12 times the new armature current and that is actually a new expression that can be used in this expression here so we can now say the following then we get the situation for the new arm new motor constant by saying that new motor constant is then the situation for the motor constant in question a times the field ratio of the field currents and again using this value here and also the 40 amps for the first case if i now simplify this i will have 0.0327 times the new armature current all right now we are now very close to what we need to calculate the required new shaft speed this is now what we have and we know of course also that the developed torque is also given by this expression where you also see the motor constant, the new motor constant. So I can say the developed torque is also the expression where you have the armature current and also the motor constant. So we have actually two equations and two unknowns. If I now substitute this expression, which is then just the motor constant is equal to 0 0.0327 times the armature current, in this expression for the developed torque for the second case, I have this situation. That will allow me to have this expression, which is just substitute this expression in here, in here. I have this, and if you now solve this for the new armature current, you will get 52.4 amperes. So we will actually increase your armature current or your terminal current here from 40 amps to 52.4 amps. Okay, we have now this, and we can now substitute this armature current value in here, in this expression, in order to calculate the new motor constant. So let's move on. This is now again just a summary of what we have done before in the previous discussion. And again, if I now want to calculate the motor constant, the new motor constant, I just substitute the value of my new armature current in here in this expression and I will have 1.71 waiver. So I am now decreasing my motor constant from 2.24 to 1.71. That is now what we have for this second situation. Again, we can set up our equation here using Kirchhoff voltage law. And we assume, of course, again, that this is now in steady state and DC operation. So the reactances of these two inductors will be zero. So we can just go directly to this equation. What's actually the same? The back EMF voltage here is equal to the terminal voltage minus the voltage drop across the other elements. Now, what are the other elements? We have the RA here, just the back, just the armature resistance again. And we have the two resistors here in parallel, and that is actually shown here. So RX in parallel with the RF. So if I now also use these values, we have so the terminal voltage, the armature resistance, the field resistance, and also the parallel resistor, which is 700 milliohms in here, we just substitute the values. And also we have calculated for our new armature current, we have this situation. The result of this 0.7 ohms in parallel with the 0.5 ohms will be added to this 
and that will result in a new resistor actually in series in this combination total. And now, if I now calculate this, you will get a very close value to 223.8 volts for our new back EMF. Now, we know that the back EMF is again related to our motor constant, also the new shaft speed. We know the motor constant, the new one. We would like to know, of course, the new shaft speed, so we can rewrite this by inserting actually this value for the back EMF and also the new motor constant. And that will give us 131 radians per second. So, in summary, we have the following situation. The parameters, the back EMF, the motor constant, and also the shaft speed. Without the parallel resistor, so actually without this part of the circuit, the back EMF was 224 volts. This was our 2.24 V, was, was our motor constant. And our shaft speed was 100 radians per second, given actually in this exercise. But increasing now, or adding actually our Rx in this form, so parallel across this field winding, the back EMF is very close again to the original situation, 2 224 volts. But the motor constant decreases from 2.24 to 1.71, and the our shaft speed will increase. So actually you can see the way it is increasing, because it is also the motor constant that will increase in the same uh, fashion. So this is what we see from this exercise by actually having a parallel resistor across the field winding of a DC series motor you will increase your shaft speed and your back EMF will stay very close to what we have before but your motor console will decrease. So that is a very important situation because the field current will change by having a parallel combination across the field winding and that will, of course, be very important to consider. It is not anymore to the first armature current. So that's actually a very important thing to consider in this exercise. All right, this concludes this exercise. I hope this clarifies the situation also in great detail, having an additional component to adjust the speed of this system. If you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.